hello everyone. <laughs> My music is not playing, so I have to start the, the show without music today. <sighs> I don't know, Podbean's been giving me some issues lately, but anyway, Welcome, everyone. Um, I am Sally Blue Sister, and this is my turn to talk, and it is hump day, Wednesday, March 23rd, 2022. So I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. It is a beautiful, beautiful day in sunny California. And I'm just looking at this and my music just does not want to play. So I apologize for that. But anyway, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get started. And we are um, going to talk about the one thing in life. And what I mean by that, hey, Frankie, welcome. Welcome, welcome. You are number one. So I want to talk about what is the one thing in life? What is the one thing in life that, you know, that is absolutely certain? You know, aside from the sun rising and setting each day, what is the one thing, the one thing that you can count on? You know, um, is it you get up and go to work every day? Uh, is it that, you know, you can count on you know, your car starting every day, you know, the love of your spouse, the love of your children, you know, what is the one thing that you can count on every day and how important, how important is that one thing? I mean, if that one thing, welcome power girl. And if that one thing, um, you know, uh, was taken away, what, what would happen? What would happen? You know, you have people that you, you depend on. Um, and what does the depending on someone mean? It means to trust someone or something and know that they will help you or do what you want or expect them to, to do. So um, do you like, do you depend on your children to take out the trash every day? You know, what is the one thing that you can count on? And is when you depend on something and when you count on something, is that the same thing? Counting on something, depending on something, is that the, the, the same thing? You know, um, if you depend on, on, on someone, does that mean that you can trust them? Is that the same thing? If you depend on something, does that mean that you can trust that that thing will happen every single day? Now, some people can say that you can depend on the sun rising every day. No, you can't because the sun doesn't, I mean, technically the sun rises every day, but can you depend on the sun rising every day? I don't think you can, because if you were to die, the sun's not going to rise for you. I mean, that may seem a little far-fetched. Can you depend on the sun shining every day? No, you can't, because the sun doesn't shine every day. You know, um, there's fog, there's rain, there's clouds. So you cannot de depend on that. You know, um, can you, you know, depend on, you know, breathing fresh air every day? No, because everyone doesn't live in areas with fresh air. In fact, does anybody live in an area with, with fresh air anymore? So what are the, what are some of the things, you know, that you can depend on every single day? And those are my, my questions. So. Um, let me go down and I'm going to ask, who do you de depend on? So I said, what is the one thing that you, that is absolutely certain? What is the one thing that you can depend on? So I'm going to throw the who in there. Is there a who? Is there a, a someone that you depend on uh, every single day? And 
can you depend on this person every single day, be it their, your spouse, be it a parent, you know, are they people that you can depend on to do things for you every single day? Your, you know, mom or dad pick, picks you up from school. Can you depend on them that they'll be on time all, all the time? You know, um, w- welcome GP man and welcome Rhino. Um, you know, is, you know, um, is depending upon someone, you know, um, and counting on someone, is that the same thing? You know, um, and again, I say, um, if your mom or dad picks you up from school every day and they come every day at three o'clock, but they came at one day, they came at 315 because of traffic or whatever, is that the same thing as depending upon someone every single day? So welcome Scooter. So, um, you know, again, depending upon someone and counting on someone, is that the same thing? Welcome Sharon. You know, um, I don't think that it is. You know, um, you, I I think that you can depend on someone to, to do something, but when you count on them, to me, it's more of a, you're absolutely going to do it. If, if I say you can count on me to, to be there, you know, it's like, I will, you're absolutely sure that I am going to be there and I absolutely will show up. But when you depend on someone to me and and I I could be wrong, you know, (laughs) thank you, Scooter. Um, You know, I I could totally be wrong, but if you say you depend on someone, isn't it kind of like, well, okay, you depend upon this, this person, you know, maybe they'll be there. Maybe they won't. That's how, how I see it. So welcome Coltrane. So, um, does anybody think I'm wrong? Does anybody think I'm right? You know, um, does anybody want to come up and give me their opinion? Um, you know, does it not make sense? You know, so, um, I mean, what is the one thing that you can depend on? Because, um, there are no free passes. I mean, life to me doesn't give you a, a free, free pass. Some people may have more benefits than others, you know, whatever, but you know, there are no free, free passes in in life, at least not to me. So again, what can you depend on? You know, and, um, uh, I came up with this, with this subject because I was, uh, you know, talking to a friend of mine and we talk about a lot of different things. And when, you know, we were talking about d- depending on people because um, her son, um, every time he is supposed to pick up his little sister from, from school, um, her son is 17 and he is driving. And I do believe he's a senior in, in high school. And he's supposed to pick up his little sister who is in elementary school. But she's always the last one to get picked up. Welcome, 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 Brina. Um, you know, she is always the last one to get picked up or she's always picked up late. And there have been a lot of times when um, the school has called the mom saying, you know, your daughter's here, blah, blah, blah. Um, and she's, you know, and she says, you know, what can you do, depend on every day? And she says, I can't, you know, depend on, on my son. And that's why I say, if she were to say, something like I can count on my son every day to pick up my daughter from, from school. Again, those two things are not the same thing to me, depending upon somebody and counting on, on, on someone. So that's, so that's my question today, guys. What is the one thing in life that you can depend on? What is the one thing in life for you that is absolutely certain? You know, what is, what is the one thing in life that you know, that no matter what will always be that constant. So does anybody want to come up and chat with me or chat in the, in the, uh, chat of what I'm asking? If not, (laughs) I can keep going. Welcome mama bear Tracy, you know, um, I would really like to know if you guys agree with me on counting on someone and depending upon and depending on someone. Is that the the same thing? Anybody? Anybody? (laughs) 
<laughs> hey, Mama Bear. Well, okay. Anybody? <laughs> All right. So, can you depend on a family member doing something for you every single day? No matter who that family member is, can you depend on your family member every single day? And I bring up a family member because um, my son is home this week uh, for, for spring break. And when he's home, you know, one of his jobs is taking out the trash. And I can count on him to do that. I don't depend on him. I can count on him to do it because he does it like, like clockwork. He, he, he takes it out. When my son is not home, I cannot count on my husband to do it. I cannot depend on my husband to do it unless I ask him to. If I ask him or tell him to do it, then he does it. But he just won't, <laughs> he just won't do it. You know, that's just, he, he just won't. So welcome crucible. So, you know, so once again, it's, it's, you know, depending upon, depending on someone and counting on someone. Um, is it the same thing? Anybody, anybody? Oh, you all are gonna make, make me work, <laughs> work uh, today. How many kids do you have? GP, I have one son. He is an only child. He is an only child. So does that, um, does, are you asking me to, to, to ask me or are you asking me because I can count on him to take out the trash and then do some other chores? Okay, sort of. Okay, Mama Bear, are you talking to me or are you talking to Scooter? Okay, I'm sorry. Let, let, let me go up. Okay. Um, I think it's just your definition, Scooter says. I think they are the same. Hmm. Okay. And what's, and what's, what's the question? Okay, Mama Bear, the question is, do you think that counting on someone and depending upon someone, do you think that they are the same? I don't think they are, but Scooter thinks, uh, Scooter th thinks that they are. That counting on someone and depending upon someone, um, it is for me is is different from him it is the same crucible okay so you've heard the question what do you think it sounds to me a little bit like <clears throat> a distinction without a difference and i think if you were to use those terms interchangeably in a in a in a sentence to anybody a child a spouse a partner a business associate whatever can i count on you that person will hear reliability, they'll hear dependability, um, they'll hear trust, they'll hear a lot of different things. And I think if you said, can I depend on you? They would hear, it would connote similar sentiments, I think. So do you have a specific example where um, somebody would have said, well, can I depend on you? And they say, yes, I, you can depend on me. And then whatever it was you were supposed to do, you didn't do. And then the person comes back and says, well, wait a minute. You told me I could depend on you. And, and you, know, you say, I, I was counting on you. And you say, well, you didn't say you were counting on me. You said you were depending on me. Would that really fly in any kind of an argument or in a court of law or anything? Because I think the two are interchangeable. So I'm just, I'm curious, Solid, do you have any specific examples where somebody would be able to distinguish between, well, I thought you said count on you. You didn't say depend on you. That strikes me as a real kind of weaselly way of splitting hairs. Well, I mean, I don't know, because I think you just defined what I just said that, you know, I, you asked me, could I did depend on you? Can you, can I depend on you, you know, to, you know, meet me at the meet me at the courthouse at, at, at 12, no, at, at 12 noon. And then you, you say yes. And you don't show up just, just like you just said. And then I'm like, well, I was counting on you. I mean, to me, if you count, if, if, if you're, if you can count on someone, that means that that person will absolutely be, be there or do whatever it is that you wanted them to do. You were, you counted on them to, to do this, this, or this, and they did it. But then when you depend on someone, you're kind of like, 
okay, I'm, I'm depending on you and you're giving them that out. Like, well, I'm depending on you. So please, please, will you please, will you please be there? Will you please go? I am depending on you to go to, to this party with me because I don't want to go by, by myself. And to me, you know, you're, you're almost, I don't want to say begging them, but it's more of a plea. But when you're counting on someone, I'm counting on you to go to this party with me. And that person knows that, you know, that, that they, they better be there that, you know, that they, that you absolutely want them to go. Does that help? Yes, it does. But let's just, let's turn the tables for just a second. Let's just say, um, and maybe you just re, we just, you just laid this out and I, and I missed it. So uh, if I'm repeating or missing something, just, just tell me. So if, if, if you were the person who was said, you know, I need you to do this for me. Now you have to do this because I'm depending on you. And then the whole thing falls through. And like we said, the guy doesn't show up or something happens. And the person confronts that person and says, well, I was, I was counting on you. And you say, well, you didn't say you were counting on me. You said you were depending on me. Those aren't things. Would you accept that explanation from a person who just caused you some difficulty or some harm in some kind of way and they were trying to get into a semantical thing by saying, well, no, 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 no. You can't hold me accountable for that. You didn't say you were depending on me. You only said you were counting on me. Would you find that to be an acceptable explanation? Hello? Hello, can, can, can you hear me? I missed everything you just said there, Sally. Okay, all right, no, what, what, what I was gonna, what, what I said was, um, I know you guys are gonna put, push back on, on my answer. And again, this probably has to do with the way I, I, I was raised because in, in our house, it was, if, if, if our parents said we're counting on you to do something, then you did it. But if you depended upon upon someone, you did have that you did have that room to. I'm I'm depending on you. If I said, well, you know, mom, I couldn't go because, you know, I had to stay late after school or something, um, then you do have that that out. So that that's why I'm saying I do believe that there is a difference between counting on someone where you know absolutely 100% that that person or that thing or whatever it is is always going to be there or do that thing for you. Whereas you're depending on it, you're like, well, I hope, I hope they come. I hope she does this. You know, you're again, it's almost like a please, please. So. That, that makes sense. But I, th I guess you're, you're hoping then that someone's going to see the same, unless you are very explicit and say, no, I don't want to I want to make sure here that you understand. I'm not saying I'm counting on you. I'm depending on, unless you went to that length to make sure they completely understood what you meant in the strictest sense of that word. I, I think you're kind of rolling the dice, hoping somebody shares your definition of depend and your definition of counts on. And depending on what it is that's at stake, it's kind of a risky proposition. Okay, Crispo, I'm going to ask you a question, but first I want to read what, what Brennan says. Uh, Brennan says, counting, being confident that they will, dependent, having to ask and rely on, but weary of outcome. Weary of outcome, again, like you're not sure. Is that how, how you're, you're differentiating? Yes, yes, that is, yes. Um, so let me ask, ask this. Um, Crispo, um, we've known each other for a while, many years. And for people who don't know, it's been over 30, probably closer to 35 years. We have known each other. And have I not said, and some people think that I'm harsh when I, when I say this, but have I not said that there are things that I don't like? There are things that I will not accept. I, you know, this is how I am. You know, I don't like, you know, people who are like this. I don't like people who are like this. I'm telling you definitive that that you can count on me to be this way you can count on me that if that if you keep asking me the same question over and over and over i'm going to shut down and i'm going to walk away you can count on me being being like, like that because that's part of my personality you cannot you, you cannot depend on me to be like that but you can count on on, on me being that so crucible does does that make sense you know knowing my personality and knowing that 
I'm like, boom, boom, boom. And that's how I see counting on someone that boom, you are going to do it. If you depend on someone, you're like, eh, well, maybe they'll do it. Maybe they're, they're, they're that way. Maybe she won't get upset. Maybe she will. No, I mean, yeah, I said, well, based on, on what I know of, you know, it makes perfect sense. But what, what in your world, let's just say, try to be um, devil's advocate here. In your world, when somebody says, if you were asking somebody to do something for you and you said, you know, can I, can I count on you? And you say, and somebody says, you can depend on me. Which of those commitments would you deem to be the stronger and the more reliable um, in your world? When you hear the word depend versus count on, do you feel more or less confident? I would be more confident if, 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 if you said that you could count on me, that you can count on me. That is the one that I would take because if someone says to me, um, well, you know, Salad, you know, you can do, do depend on me that I will come back. And, and, you know, I've, I've, I've done this. So when you say depend, I'm like, okay, so are you saying that there's that possibility that you won't be there? Are you saying there's that possibility that, um, you may not be able to go or, you know, um, I'm asking you to help me move and, and, you know, I'm saying, okay, so can I count on you to help me move? You can depend on me to do it. Okay. But, and then I will come back and I'll ask you. So when you say depend, are you saying that there's that possibility that you may not show up? Yeah, I guess you guys have kind of, based on what I'm seeing in the chat and listening now, yeah, I, I could be persuaded that count on is a little bit stronger of a commitment. Depend, I suppose you could you could look at that as a little bit mealy-mouthed. You know, what does that really mean? Depend, you know, to be there at all, be there on time, you know, stay as long as I'm supposed to. Count on does, now that I'm thinking about it, convey a little bit, more of a stronger commitment because when you say to somebody you can count on me that that is really kind of not i'm not going to say life or death but that that connotes a very serious situation depend yeah i, I i'm and now that i'm thinking this through I, I guess i can see a more forceful commitment based on count on me versus depend Okay, and that's and, and that's what, what I was saying. Um, and and Mama Bear says, do you depend on your husband to take you to an appointment or do you count on him to take you? Well, if I'm in if you know I'm in traction or I have a cast on and I can't drive, whatever, I'm counting on him to to take me because if I depend on him, you know, it's like, okay, well, you know, I got, you know, I can't do it right now, or okay, do you have to can can we go on Monday instead of Tuesday? You know, and then Scooter, you say, Why can't on you? Why can't I depend on you to 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 be that way? And you're talking about in terms of, of, of my personality. I mean, you can, but if I'm telling you that you can count on me that I am definitely going to do this or I'm not going going to do that, I'm telling you that it is absolute. Um, so, and then again, I I go back to my friend when she was getting upset because her teenage son, you know, was picking up her daughter late from school. You know, that, you know, that she can't, she could not count on him to be on, on time because he was always late. She was depending upon him to do it, hoping that she would, but she could not count on him to pick up her daughter because he was always late. Sometimes, or he, sometimes he, he would be on time, but most of the time that he, he, he was late. So if anything, she could always count on him being late, but she could not depend on him to pick her daughter up on time. So... Am I making sense, guys? <laughs> so Mama Bear says, so I asked my man to take me to an appointment. Then last minute, he can't. What do you say? What, what do you say to your man? I mean, I would say I was counting on you. You know, if if he said that he would take you and at the last minute he couldn't do it, then I'm saying, hey, I was counting on, on you to take me. You know, um, because the way I'm reading this mama bear is that it was definite that he was definitely going to be able to take you, but at the last minute he couldn't. So you were counting on him. You were counting on him to take you. So, so I can say I can never depend on you. You could, but I'm just saying that for me, counting on someone 
is more of a definitive yes, more of a definitive, I'm going to be there, I'm going to be able to do it, um, as opposed to depend. Yeah, I I don't disagree with that. Count on sounds definitely sounds more consequential. Like there's there's really something hanging in the balance here. Depend, like I said earlier, is a little softer. So when you say to somebody, you can count on me, you're really giving a commitment, I think. And I think you're doing the same. It may just be a personal preference as to which word you use. I don't I think people people intend to mean the same thing. I don't think people are saying, well, I better not say depend. I better not say count on because I might not be there. I think people view them as interchangeably. But if I really tried to break it down like we're breaking it down now, I would have to say if somebody said you can count on me, there's more of a personal commitment there. There's more of a personal um, skin in the game thing to me. When you say count on me, it becomes more personal than depend. And that's just kind of me splitting hairs, I guess. But <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm reading what Scooter, I'm reading what Scooter is saying. My husband is worth as I can't count or depend on 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 him. I'm assuming you're saying him ever, and um, <laughs> Mama Bear says I'm getting so damn confused. <laughs> okay, I don't mean mean to confuse anyone, but I mean it's like I get into these conversations with with, with different people, and I'm talking to people, and you know it's like sometimes we just really do split hairs and sometimes some of the conversations that I have, you know, with some of my friends, it's like, you know, you know, we really get, well, do you mean this or do you mean that? Or exactly, you know, what do you mean? So now I'm going to ask you guys this. If you can count on someone, I bring up the word count again. If you can count on someone, does that mean that you can absolutely trust them? Okay. You, if you can count on someone that you can absolutely trust them, to do whatever it is they were going to do. So what do you all think about that? I, I, I think trust, you know, there's another one that, that, that conveys, that has a lot of weight behind it because it has so many, um, it, it has a heavy, it's a heavy word. And when people invoke the word trust, Again, it's very personal. It gets to your character. It gets to your reliability. It gets to your honesty. It gets to a lot of very personal things that count on and depend may, may not because trust is a sacred thing. And as everybody you know says, I don't know if it's true or not, once it's lost, it can't be recovered. So when you say trust, that's a heavy thing. Count on, depend, it seems a little more innocuous. But when you put the word trust out there, now you're testing people's character. And that's a whole different hurdle to have to clear. And I'd rather have somebody depending on me or counting on me than trusting me, depending on what it is. Not that I'm not trustworthy, but if somebody's trusting me to, you know, deliver something to someplace in rush hour traffic, um, you know, on a Friday afternoon, and I'm just never going to be able to get there for obvious reasons. And they say, well, I trusted you. Well, really? I mean, be honest about it. Should you have trust should be the word you invoke? Hoping, counting, depending maybe, but trust invokes a whole set of characteristics that I think can be a little bit of a landmine when you, when you tell somebody you're trusting them and they let you down. Have you lost their trust? Or are you going to be a little bit more cautious next time about what you ask them to do? Um, that's a tricky one. Okay. Um, now mama bear says I've never trusted anyone hundred percent, not even my husband. Um, and, and mama bear, you know, I, I understand where, where, where you're coming from because I don't trust anyone 100%. I just don't, you know, um, you know, you can trust people 99%, but I don't give someone 100% of my trust. Um, and that could be wrong. You know, you could say, well, you know, you're married, you know, you know, your, your, your kids, you know, whatever that's, you know, that is just, j just me. Um, now that guy says, um, there's multiple types of, of lies. One is lie of omission, leaving out the information on purpose. Hmm. 
That's interesting that you say that. Okay, so let me ask, ask this. Um, okay, that guy says, I wouldn't trust my clone. Okay, there was, a, a, see, I trust my dog. You know, Scooter, I trust <laughs> my dogs too. Okay, and that's one thing that I can count on. I can count on, I have three, okay? I can count on two of my dogs who, if I were to die, they would be, they would be those dogs that are, at your, you know, grave site sitting there, the, my, my, the, the, the middle one, she's, she would just kick, kick me to the curb and that's it. But I can count on these other two dogs to constantly, consistently follow me around the house. You know, what are you doing? Where, where, where are you, where are you going? I, I can count on them to do it. I can say I depend on them, but I count on my dogs to, to do that. So, um, all right. And GB man says Chase Bank trusted you with the credit card limit, but you maxed that bad boy out in the first month. OK, so GP, is that trust from a credit card company or let me ask you, or do they depend on you to go over your credit limit? Do they depend on you to max out your card? Does does a bank depend on you to overdraw your account so they can charge fees? I'm sorry, you brought up Chase, uh, Chase Bank and that made me think about the whole fee thing. So so do credit cards depend on you to do that? Meaning they hope that they're not counting on you to do it because everyone's not going to do it. But they're hoping that, that you do it. So, so they're depending on you to do it so they can start charging fees and they get most of their money through through fees. So what do you th think about that? Anybody? Welcome. Balram. Yeah, when it comes to trust, I don't think banks, if we're going to talk about the bank al analogy here real quick, I don't think banks trust anybody. Um, they're banks. It's in their DNA not to trust anybody. That's why you have to sign all this paperwork and have to jump through all these hoops. They don't trust anybody. But I think you hit the nail on the head. So they're depending and counting on you to max out your credit limit. These things are set up and I want to get into a whole predatory conversation or anything, but there's a method to, to the madness, but do banks trust you to pay your credit card bill every month? No, I don't think they do. Otherwise they wouldn't be late fees and all these penurious, you know, provisions in place to punish people who are late with their credit card payments. So if there's any trust at all, they're trusting you to screw up. But I don't think it's a trust thing at that point. They're they're hoping and they're counting on you because they have repercussions that they can impose on you for not paying it. But trust, no. I don't think there's any trust at all between banks and, and people. But trust, you know, is trust a um, – is it a fungible commodity? In other words, is it the same in the hands of everybody? You know, I mean, are there degrees of trust or is trust an absolute thing? Either I trust you or I don't trust you. Is it possible to trust somebody a little bit? Is it possible to be a little bit pregnant? I mean, it would seem to me it would be one of those absolute things that is is not fungible. In other words, it doesn't have different value or or it's not the same in 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 in, in everybody's hands. So trust is a higher hurdle, I think, because it gets at other at other more character type things. So what about what 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 GP says? Um, okay, yes, banks do count on it for profit, but uh, do you think that what he said about Chase Bank trusted you with a credit card limit, but you maxed that bad boy out in the first month? Do you think that that statement's correct, or you know, as I said, that they depend on you to do it so they can get fees? Yeah, if we're sticking with the bank conversation, yeah, they have all kinds of data and statistics and probability and profiles that show people based on certain credit profiles and certain income and demographics, you know, what they're likely to do with a credit card. And then based on your credit history and things, that's how they set your your, your credit limit. Um, but in terms of, um, of any kind of, um, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought, Solid Blue. Can you interrupt, refresh my memory here? In terms of, you know, Chase Bank trusting you with a credit card limit to be maxed out, or I say they depend on you to do it so they can uh, get fees. Yeah, they do. They they do everything is by design. And, and so trust, 
I don't think there's ever any trust in, involved here at all. If they trusted you, they wouldn't have so many um, so many provisions and so many clauses in their agreements. If you trust, like say for instance, let's say your your son, not your son, but somebody's son wants to borrow the car and they're 17 years old and you don't tr trust them yet because they don't have a track record. But you say, okay, I can't, I can't keep you from the car forever. I'm going to let you use the car Friday night and, and you're going to be able to go out as long as you come home at the right time and whatnot. And that would be a trust thing. But then if you also secretly went out and doubled up on your car insurance or took out additional coverage or whatever the case may be without telling your son because you were afraid of what might happen, is that the same as trusting them? Or is it, is it not trusting them because you've taken steps in case something doesn't, in case something goes wrong, you have a, um, a safety net, if you will. So are you truly trusting somebody if you've got other arrangements made? Or is trust really an absolute thing where you say, I'm going to trust you to take the car on Friday night. And I'm going to trust you not to get into an accident. I'm going to trust you to come home at midnight like we discussed. I'm not taking out any additional coverage. I'm not going to follow you around to see where you're going. I'm not doing any of those things. I'm absolutely trusting you 100%. So, I mean, it's a, it's a hard thing to, to, to quantify because you may say you're trusting somebody, but then take steps to mitigate any outcomes that you don't like, which kind of undercuts the whole trust concept, doesn't it? Yeah. So in that case, then should trust be a word that people should use sparingly? So, you know, if, 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 if someone says, you know, yeah, I, I trust you. I mean, cause people, I mean, we, people use the word trust, like, you know, I mean, like, I mean, people say, say that word, word a lot, but you know, should we use the word trust the way we, we do? Should we use it more, more sparingly? Yes, I think so. But you know, when, when, again, it kind of goes back to the, the original question of dependability and, and, and counting on somebody is trust a word that is subjective. In other words, when I say you can trust me, do what, and you say you can trust me. Do we have the same definition of trust? Um, you know, is, is, it a, is it a subjective thing? When Just like counting on somebody and depending on somebody, that's a little bit subjective. So I, I think it gets tossed around, but I do think it means different things to different people. In, in my view, trust is an, is an unbreakable commitment. Not that you can't make mistakes, or, or have things go wrong that don't have anything to do with, with trust. Like I said, the example I gave about, you know, trying to deliver a package someplace in rush hour traffic, I did my very, very best to do it and I, I couldn't get it done. It wasn't because you couldn't trust me. There were other circumstances that prevented me, but that person may conclude, I can't trust you next time. And so is that a absolute definition of trust or is somebody injecting something into it for their purposes. I think someone is uh, that you're definitely injecting something in, into it. Um, but again, you know, trust is a, is a very strong word. So um, I'm going to go on to, 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 to Bahram. Um, you kind of know what we're talking about. So what do you think? Uh, so hi, hi, Crucible and, and hi, Solid Blue, first hey, of Bob. all. Um, I hope you're well. And, uh, I, I don't really know what you're on about. I, I thought we were talking about one. Th what is it? The one thing in life that we we know for sure is going to happen. Is that is that what? Well, it yeah, is? but we but you know how the show goes. It transitions. I know. into something else. So, so now so you're I'm, talking about banking. Well, no, <laughs> no, we're talking. No, we Sorry. were talking about the word the word depend because I think that when you count on someone and depend on someone, I think those are two separate things. I think counting on on something or someone, it is absolute, is definite going it's definitely gonna happen. Whereas depending upon someone, you're like, eh, well, maybe they'll do it, maybe they won't. So and then when the chase and banking thing came up, I was like, banks, you know, depend on you to go over your credit limit or to overdraw your account so they can charge fees. 
So mm-hmm. that's so that's kind of where we are. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to add much. I would say uh, those two words are very similar. I, I think I'd probably agree with you where counting on is a bit more stronger, depending on would be a little less. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll I'd probably be better passing the mic and listening for a while before I chime in. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, shy lady, welcome. Hey. Hey, hey. Okay, so the question um, was, I know we get into kind of a long string of banking topics, but um, I would say um, the thing that we can depend on is death. That is certainly just going to happen. Okay, okay. Now, again, now I'm going to pick and pick, pick apart your words. You're saying you can depend on death. Can you depend on death or can you count on it? Because I think you can count on death, because yeah, it's yeah, ab- because word. because it is absolute. Yeah, this is this is true. So, your question says the one thing in life that we can is it depend on the one thing in life the one thing in life that is absolutely certain. Aside from the okay. sun rising and setting each day, what is the one thing you you can count on? So, and then well, I that, threw that, in that, that's yeah, common, would be death. Yeah, okay. We definitely can count that count on that one, for sure. Okay. At least, at least, at least in this um, world that we live in now, you can one hundred percent. Okay. So, is there something that? Um, so, if I were, so if, if I were to say, or you, or you just said that you can depend on on death. Do you think that, you know, that when you talk about dying, that is the same thing that count on and depending on that is the same thing. Pretty much. Maybe I used it um, in a wrong tense, but pretty much you, you, you can definitely um, uh, count on it for sure. Okay. Okay. And then uh, Brenna says, uh, Brenna, is it Brenna or is it, or is it Brina? I, I, I always try to make sure that I pronounce people's names correctly. And she says, true, we need to be more comfortable with death being a reality. Um, that's true. Okay. And that guy says, it did feel good. I started in the mailroom and left when I was in charge of 30 people. I'm not sure what's going on there. I missed something in the chat. Um, the one thing we can depend on unequivocally is constant change. Okay, um, I will come back to that. And Ray says 100%. Okay, so May, um, you have the mic, and I will come back to what Crucible said. Um, hello, everybody. Um, hello. As child lady said, um, yes, death is certain, but there is also life. So with every death, there is life. Just as how you said, with every sunset, there is darkness. So that's that, that's something that's inevitable. But what what is absolute? Uh, sorry, absolutely certain is me trusting in within myself to get whatever I need to get done. I don't know about trusting others. Yes, that's a thing. But the funny thing about it is, you can do everything correct for somebody or for everybody and the one time you messed up it's like you never done nothing completely right the whole fucking time so that's that's why i said i can only trust within myself because one the one time you mess up it's gonna be like the whole world they're, they're gonna overlook all the good that you have ever done and say that I couldn't trust you to just do this one thing, but the millions of other stuff that you they trusted you to do and you did. Mm. So individuals are very, hmm, you know. So I myself, I'm absolutely certain to get shit done myself. Okay, all right, and you know, and May May has a point because I can count on myself to make sure things get done 
you know, like they say, if you want something done, do it yourself. I can count on myself that this is going to get done. You know, you know, if, you know, I'll use the example again of, 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 of the trash, you know, I can count on myself that I can, will take out the trash, but I can't count on my husband to do it unless I tell him to, if I tell him to do it, I can count on him. If I depend on him to do it, it's not going to get done, you know? So, um, now I want to go back to what Crucible says. He says, the one thing we can depend on is constant change. So you use the word depend and in the same time you said, um, that no matter what constant change. So wouldn't it be you can, that we can, um, that we can count on constant change? I'm a slow learner. Yes, that's what it, that's what it should be. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it's a kind of a trite comment. It's stating the obvious. It's not exactly a, a, a deep thinker kind of a statement, but, you know, certainly as we get older, um, you know, shy lady is right. Death is, is, is a certainty. Um, but, but so is, so is change. And, and as we get older, it seems like things change even faster um, and, and more radically because I think we get, we get more set in our ways as we get older. And when change comes along, we're not as resilient about it as we were, depending on what the changes are, I guess, but um, as we were when we were, we were younger. And I think the, the lesson I take away from that is to not get so knocked off your pins when changes happen. Expect them. You don't have to expect gloom and doom all the time, but you should expect things to be in flux all the time. You're going to be up and you're going to be down. You're going to be up and you're going to be down. If those are your expectations, then, um, you know, then everything becomes a lot more, a lot more manageable. Um, but to expect things are always going to, and I've fallen into it myself, you know, things are good right now. They're never going to change. Everything is fine. And all of a sudden everything blows up and I'm like, where the hell am I? Same thing in reverse. Um, things are in the crapper right now and it's never going to get any better. And in a couple of weeks time, a month's time, things have turned around to where you're like, what, where am I right now? So I think if you can, if we as a society can accept there's going to be pendulum swings, you know, in a macro way and in a micro way and to expect them and not get caught off guard by them, um, then I think, you know, life becomes a little bit, uh, a little bit more manageable, but, but there's not a certain, there's not a single person on this planet whose life is the same from one week to the next much less one month or one year to the next when you consider the changes that take place in people's lives on a daily basis and in society on a daily basis. Change is one of those things that is best managed when you're expecting it. So what is one thing that is constant in terms of, of change? What do you, what is one thing that is the, what is one thing that we always know will change? Surprisingly, this may sound like an odd answer, but people's personalities um, not that their fundamental personalities change, but their moods change and their, um, their lives change. And what we are used to getting from somebody under certain circumstances may change because their life has changed for better or for worse. And I think we get caught off guard sometimes by the fact that we are relying on people to be a certain way all the time. And we're not the same way all the time. We have good days. We have bad days. We change our minds on things. We flip flop. We do things that don't make a lot of of, of sense. Um, so I think, you know, in that sense, that's one thing that has kind of surprised me that I've tried to get used to is it doesn't mean you can't count on people, but you have to accept the, 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 um, the variables in, in, in the variances in their lives that at any given day, they may not be the same person they were last week and you shouldn't judge them for it because you're changing too. You're not the same person you were last week and you're not going to be the same person next week. Okay. So that brings up the question that I would have then is because I, I think you're right. I think people do change, but I think as you get older, um, people's personalities pretty kind of like level out unless something really major happened. And I could be totally wrong, but of course, you know, you're not the same person you were when you were five and when you're 16, you're not the same person, you know, um, you were, you know, when at, at 16 or probably even 25. 
But I think that when you get into 40s and 50s and you're moving on up there, I think your personalities pretty much stay stay the same. Um, so are people really changing or are people just having a bad day and you caught them on a bad day? Um, you know, how much, you know, do people re really change? Crucible? Yeah, I don't think, I mean, I think I saw a shy, shy, shy lady type in the chat. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not arguing that people's personalities change in a real fundamental way. I, I think you're right. We change when we're 10 to when we're 20 and to when we're 30. But by the time we get into our 40s and 50s, we're, we're pretty much who we're going to be. I was more referring to the, the, the daily ins and outs or, or weekly or monthly ins and outs in the, in the swings in people's lives. I don't mean the fundamental changes in their personality where they went from being a really nice person to being this terrible person. And I'm not talking about that. I was more focused on the, on the um, more subtle, less obvious things that happen to people in their lives where their moods change. It's probably, I probably didn't word it correctly. It's more of a mood thing based on what's happening in your life as opposed to an actual fundamental change in your personality. But I think we forget that nobody is a robot. You know, we're not constant. And people are such are so fundamental to our lives. We're social people. We interact with people. And our, life, our daily existences can sometimes be affected by the moods of others. And if we're going into a situation expecting this person to be a certain way and they're not, it can, it can kind of throw us off and kind of make us wonder about things when in fact it may just be, I must, I'm not having a good day or I'm not having a good week. And it's as simple as that. Okay. Uh, Ba, you want to pass the mic or? Um, no, I think the whole, I think you're talking there, well, in my mind, I think you're talking about like being dependable and, you know, making plans, which is something that, that I've kind of struggled with over my life. And, and I tend not to do that, especially long-term plans. Uh, like, for example, if your your friend asks you to go to the cinema next Saturday or, or something, you know, later that night, I, I tend to not commit to those things because, as Crucible Man says, our day could be stressful it could be you know something could happen and and you don't like i would hate to let the other person down so rather than say yes i'll be there i'll say look if i can make it i'll make it or you know don't rely on me don't depend on me but i i, I might be there or something like that um i think that's probably a common thing um you know and, and i don't think it's a good thing either i think i need to work on it um i think when you when people you know rely on on people to especially if it's when they're in need if it's not you know if it's something that is is more serious then you should be reliable and you should stick to your word but uh you know there, there's 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 definitely things that affect our day and week even and and that we can end up changing our minds and and that's also personal preference you know we're not bound to anyone else it's just you know yeah so yeah, that's all I've got to add. Okay. All right. Now, uh, Shy Lady, I'm glad you're you're coming up because um, that guy disagreed with you. He says, I disagree with that. People change. They have to want to. Drugs and alcohol change people. So, so does quitting those, those things. And uh, before Shy Lady uh, answers that, um, I, I kind of... You know, I disagree. I disagree with you that that guy because everyone does not do drugs and, and alcohol because yes, drugs and alcohol it definitely does change you. I mean, yes, it it, it does. But if you take the drugs and alcohol away, um, how much have you really changed? Um, you know, I think that being in a bad relationship with someone, you know, if you're in an abusive relationship where your husband's beating you or you know, your wife is beating you or whatever. Yeah, you know, you you will change. But I think for the most part, especially again, when you get older, you pretty much stay the same. You may change how you look at things in life. Things may, you know, look different to you or you may approach things differently. But I think that um, you basically st stay, stay the same. And then Ray says, I don't think I change uh, personality wise, but I but ma matured. And, and I think that's what it is. You go through a maturing process. 
you know, or most of us do, some of us don't, but you know, you, you would mature. And I think that as you mature, you know, you're pretty much the, the, the same person. So having said that shy lady, you have the mic. Yeah. Well, I, I understand what, what, what they're all saying. I, I do get that. I, I'm speaking of personality traits, like a person that is, is an introvert, that's genuinely an introvert or a person that's genuinely, gen, genuinely an extrovert. I'm talking like true personality traits, not so much, um, oh, well, you know, I only like certain, you know, I, I did drugs when I was younger. I've changed now. I'm not talking about that kind of thing. I'm talking about actual traits, a person, like a person that is um, basically a mean person. They just um, have this, this thing about them that they're mean or a person that's, that's shy. Sometimes people can come out of that, but, but I think that people are generally, especially like when you were saying when they're in their 40s, people tend to be kind of mellowed out but I think that even as kids, you know, people can change. But I, I think that, for instance, this is just for instance, a kid that grew up to be a bully, I mean, a kid that was a bully in, say, elementary or middle school, that trait will probably not be as obvious when, once they're in their mid 30s or 40s. But because I've, I've had managers who I believe when they were kids, I believe they were bullies. Because in the work in the work world, even though they may not have physically like um, pushed a kid in the playground um, or whatever, they may have done something mean to them. But when you're in the corporate world, you can't push that kid, or you can mess you can mess with their minds mentally. But I, I believe that there is there there are people that were bullies, like I said, as kids, and they grow up and they come into the corporate world. And they use a form of bullying, but in a mental, in a mental sense, um, and without necessarily calling you names like they did when they were kids. They would call you names or to insult you or to um, take your lunch or something like that. But I think that those are traits that people tend to kind of be, um, I won't say born, but acquired or learned. So I think that the, you know, all the drug issues and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, people change people, you know, I know people in my life and family that have used drugs and they, they're clean and all that kind of stuff, but I'm strictly talking about traits, people's traits. That's it. Okay. Now that guy says, uh, I'm, I'm trying to catch up in, 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 uh, in, uh, the, the chat here um <laughs> ray is, is ahead of me because she seems to to say the things that i'm thinking um okay that guy says you could run into 100 people who don't that's how probability works i'm missing something here um okay gp man says my neighbor was married for 15 years turned gay and left his wife and kids for uh, for another dude okay um like myers briggs kind of personality traits okay um, okay, Brina says, oh my goodness, I want to get into the ring with my corporate workers often. Okay, so <laughs> if you want to come up, you have an, an, an invite. So if you want to come up, Brina. Okay, um, that guy says there was a time when alcoholic drinks plural with lunch was common. Okay, so that guy, you seem to, and may, I, I, I am coming to you, um, you know, you seem to keep in injecting, and I could could be wrong, um, the drugs and, and, and alcohol aspect into it. And again, drugs and alcohol, they alter your personality. So yes, you are going to change. So if you were to take the drugs and alcohol out, would you still be the same person? So that's what I'm looking at um may you, you you have the mic um again i don't want it seems as if i'm picking on shy lady um <laughs> but it's i think you you have it um backward well it can be backwards i'm not saying it is but what if that person was the one who was being bullied and now they're in a position of power and they, yeah, you know, people tend to, when they don't have any power and they come into power, 
they tend to, you know, um, abuse the power, as some would say. Um, just like, I don't want to bring this now, like a political sense, but just like um, China, when they were under the British and they were subjugated to a lot of shit. And now they're striving to be a superpower because they know the hardship that they went through back in the days and now they're showcasing their might. So you can be a person who's bullied. You don't have to be the bully, but you can be a person who was bullied and now you're, you're in power and now you can show your dominance of, as in you wanting to output what you had received. You know, so it's, it doesn't mean that your manager was a bully. It can be that he was the one being bullied. He was a Eugene or, you know, something like that, an outcast. And then he's distributing it on adults, which makes, you know, to him more sense because it's more fun to do it on adults and not children. <laughs> Okay, so May, let me ask you this though, because Shiley, I mean, she, she she did bring up a good point. So if you're the, the the class bully, you know, you're in 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 grammar school, or elementary school, and and high school, and even maybe when you you know you know get you know in into college, whatever, you could be that bully. You were that kid that was just all through your life. You were that bully. I think that it is very possible that if you become that manager, you're going to be that bully. I believe that if you become that husband or that wife or whatever, you're going to be that bully. I, I think that, <laughs> I think that, I mean, I mean, some, some bullies for whatever reason, they just don't learn. I mean, I know some of it has to do with how maybe their home, home life is. They don't have a great home life, whatever, but you know, I think that, um, it's pretty much that you can depend. Here comes his word, depend, not count on. But there's a there's a fair chance that bully growing up and you didn't and you didn't stop, you're gonna be a bully as as an as an adult. Um I'm not saying that you're wrong and I'm not saying that you're right. In life, I'm a person who looks at life in a 50-50 sense. So it depends on the individual. So I'm not gonna say me, when I was in school, I was a neutral party. I didn't do any bullying and I wasn't being bullied because I can hold my own. Everybody know that. But I didn't like picking on other persons. I'll talk shit, of course. But I didn't like, you know, abuse them or push them around and stuff like that. I'll, I'll, I'll tease them and talk crazy shit for the day. Um, throughout school, yeah. And even in now in my corporate work life, um, in the field that I am in, that, that's something that helps bring you through the day, talking crap, um, underplaying, you know, lower staff members and stuff like that, talking shit against them, of course, because that's how, well, that's how we do stuff here to, to help them to grow. We don't baby them. So we we're not gonna like hold their hands, and we're gonna we're not gonna be like, okay, you, you you at least you tried, and no, we're just gonna talk shit right throughout. And yes, it leads to arguments. Yes, it leads to vexations and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, it's for your benefit. Because if we baby you, a week from now, we're not gonna in a comfortable position working alongside with you because you're gonna do some dumb shit, and it's gonna either cost somebody their life. Or it's gonna cost the whole production, so we don't baby people. So yes, we kind of do bullying throughout. Yeah, I, that's what I basically do throughout work. So, are you bullying someone, or are you just trying to take measures to make sure that everyone stays safe? It's a combination of both. Some people, depending on the individual, they will look at it as you being a bully. We don't usually we use that term here, bully and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, because because I'm 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 asking because I, I think bully is a strong word. I wouldn't want my you know the people who are working for me to think that I bully them. They can say that you know that I'm strict or whatever. But I think if if you're bully, you're just being downright mean. As opposed to you know you're 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 strict or you're trying to, you know keep people uh, safe. 
So, you know, are you sure you want to use that word bully? Yeah. Um, okay. As I said, there are individuals who uses that term at work and I don't really care because at the end of the day, we have to be on a certain standard and level. And if you're thinking that me being hard on you is bullying you and harassing you and talking shit, at the end of the day, we just want to get everything done, work safe, and production goes well, and that's it. I don't really care what you want to think after. If we are, if I'm trying to talk to you outside work and I see that you're still offended, then that's not going to solve the problem. I'm still going to dog you right there for carrying feelings. No, I mean, I, I, I understand what you're saying, but now we're getting, you know, into a, a different topic here. But I would think that, you know, if people do not think that you're bullying them, they'll probably work a little smarter or whatever. It's, 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 it's just the word to me. So, but again, that's another, <laughs> that's another topic. But, um, but, but guys, you know, you, you can, you know, once again, you know, on, on this show, we started talking about one thing <laughs> We end up with, with, with something else. Um, but I want to go back to the word trust, okay? Um, okay, so do you think having trust in someone, okay, because we talked about dependability and if you're counting on someone, do you think having trust in, in, in someone is the same thing as having faith in, in someone? Or do you think that those are different? Can we use the same, can we, you, we interchange the words when we're talking or are we talking about two different things? So, Crucible. Boy, you always give me the hard ones, Salad. So you know, no. faith, <laughs> faith and trust, I, mean, I think trust, when you, when you use the word faith, you can get a little, little bit of an implication about religion in there. And, and I know that's not necessarily the connotation here, but trust and faith, I, I would say faith. If I have faith in you, it's obviously not a religious reference unless we're talking in a religious you know, context. But you know, when you say I trust you, again, it goes to a character type of a thing. I have faith in you means I, I believe in you. I, I have good feelings about you. I, I have good feelings about uh, the outcome that you're, that you're looking for. Um, I think faith and trust are two different things. Uh, trust is a, is a bond. I think faith is more of a belief. And the two can be the same, but I don't think they necessarily are. They can very much be, be mutually exclusive. Um, you can have faith in somebody that something is going to turn out well, but you may not trust their ability to get it done, um, or you may not trust their character uh, you know, sufficiently to 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 meet the challenge. So I think you can get into a semantical thing with the both of those, but I don't believe they're the same. They're the same concept. Okay, but now you just threw in another word that I have to to pick up on. You said um, belief. So is belief and faith? Do I have? faith in you or I have faith in you to do this. I, you know, um, I have a strong belief that you will do to do this. So I'm throwing in belief with, with, with faith. Is, is, is that the same thing? And then you have Brina who says, I trust some people, but I always have faith in, in God. So what about that? I think faith is more of a hope um, and a belief not that those are necessarily the same things either, but when you when you invoke faith, I mean, it can be religious or non-religious, but you're hoping for something. You're believing in something that you don't necessarily know to be true. Trust is more of, a, like I said, it's a personal commitment and a personal bond. It's a higher bar to clear, in my view. Faith is a little bit squishy. It, it just means you're hoping something good happens and you're believing that it can happen but you don't have any way of, of knowing, you're hoping for the best. When you're trusting somebody, there's a sacred commitment being made there that really shouldn't be be broken. Because as we talked about earlier and somebody typed it in the chat, you know, you can take 30 years to build up trust and 30 seconds to to lose it. So I, I think you can have both of those things, but they, they do mean very different things, I think. Okay. 
All right. Um, I wanted to uh, da, 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 da. see. Brina said something I just responded to. Uh, hold on one second. Okay, uh, Ray says that I think faith is a spiritual word. Um, okay, so Brina says, it's tricky for me. I've never said to someone, I have faith in you. I always use the word trust. And then Brina, I just you know asked, is that because you don't depend on the person as much? So I'm throwing in that you know word to d- depend again. So um, trust me is like counting on, on someone They've established their dependability. Okay. All right. You got me there with the county and, and, and dependability. Okay. Um, so, Bob, I'm coming to you. Here I come. Ready or not. Um, trust and faith. Are they the same things? What do you think? You think they're different? Uh, <laughs> the, these are hard questions uh, for me anyway. I'm glad Crucible Man got the, the the first attempt and i and i really liked his answer um i, I really agree with him with the the trust uh definition um is like a a building of trust between two people where faith would be like a blind faith where you you maybe don't know a person but you you know their character and you you have faith that they'll do well but um a belief and a and a trust i think are are more stronger but again, like uh, that, what that was the word I was searching for semantics. I think we are discussing semantics, if that's the right saying, like semantics being wordplay and yes, what each word means. And that's something that I know I'm really not good at. So, you know, because I'm the type of guy I'll just say a word and you know, it, it, I don't actually think about what I'm saying, I'm just saying them. So, I, I struggle with, with these types of shows, but um. Yeah, I would I would agree with with crucible, especially with the word trust. Um, that was a good definition. Yeah. Okay, shy lady. I, I was agreeing with um, Brina. I do think um, faith is more kind of, and and I think crucible man has said the same thing. Faith is more something related to God. And trust is something I, I relate more to to man, so I, I would say they're kind of different. I don't I don't tend to have faith in people, but I do have faith in God, and uh, I tend to trust. I, I tend to not have a lot of trust in certain in some people. Okay, now what about the word belief? Be- belief and faith belief. is that the same thing? I have be- the belief in you, or I mean, I, I think it's kind of similar because um, I believe there there is a, a scripture um, in the Bible that says faith is the evidence of things un- unseen, and the belief. Um, don't quote me. Don't quote me. Somebody might know the. I have to look it up, but I believe it's the belief that um, you believe. Even though you can't see it, you believe you have faith that uh, it, it it will happen. So it's a faith of, of, of evidence unseen. But I, I kind of think their sort of belief is kind of what what um, you. I think it's kind of related to 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 um, probably a spiritual aspect, in my opinion. Okay, so um, Shelley, let me ask this because I I know that you are a church going person. So, mm-hmm. do you have faith in your minister or your bishop or your pastor or reverend or priest, whomever, whatever you may call them? Do you have faith in them? Shelley, you there? Okay, she must have gotten a phone call. Okay, Bob, did you want to say something? No, I was just about to say she's not on the panel anymore. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Because it because she's just kind of frozen up here. So usually when that happens, they usually drop off or get a phone call. Okay, so um, that guy says historical evidence has a bunch of people dying because someone won't admit they misjudged the situation. Okay, I'm missing something there. To show weakness makes you a weak person to some of them. 
Let me go up because I'm missing something here. That guy, I got multiple colonels and majors in my family. These aren't rank and file. They aren't terribly forgiving. Okay, that guy, I'm a little lost here in your comments. I don't know who you're referring to. Let's see, I'm a little lost here. Do you want to come up? I am a little lost in what you're referring to. I apologize. Okay, I am going to go on. Mate, man, you have the mic. Um, I do have um, faith in my crew. Um, if, I, if I'm the one that picks my crew, I do have all faith, trust, and belief within that those individuals to get the job done. Even if... Even if I, even if I'm, I'm unavailable for a job and I re refer that person to the client, I do have a lot of faith. I have a lot of hopes and a lot of trust within that individual, not to fail me, but themselves also. Because reason being, and you're wondering why I always talk about work, or certain individuals at work, is because they come up under my wing. I was the one who literally taught, teach them. They, they learned from me. I'm not saying I'm the best, but they have a level of skills that I help them to earn and grasp. So, yeah. But within my personal life, I do myself. I'm, I'm a solo person. But when it comes to work, um, there are certain individuals that I can really, really rely on to even pull pull me at times whenever I'm slacking off or I'm feeling very idle or I'm on an off day. I can rely on them to pick up the slack if I'm messing around. And not really so... Can I say then, mate, at work, you can count on yourself more than anyone else? Of course, yeah. As uh, long as I'm in, I'm in that mindset, I can count on myself and my crew. As, uh, if, as I said, if I'm the one who pick the individuals that I want to work with, then everybody is set. We're, we're all good, ready to go. Okay. All right. So... I have one more question, then I am going to start wrapping this out. So I want to throw in the word reliability, reliability with dependability. Are, are, are they the same? Reliability, dependability, and I'm just going on who's next and crucible, you're next. So reliability and dependability, is one stronger than the other or are, is it just wordplay or, um, you know, or are they, they the same? Do you rely on someone as opposed to depending upon them? Vice versa, Crucible? Yeah, it is a bit of wordplay, um, a little bit of semantics, but I guess if I had to, under penalty of death, if I had to pick one, I would say reliability probably carries more weight. It, it goes back to the same argument between dependability and count on somebody. I think dependability lost that round, and I think it would lose this round too. Reliability, rely conveys a very strong promise. If you say you can rely on me, that gets right up into the trust area to me. It goes beyond faith. It goes beyond dependability. It's, it's pretty unbreakable. Um, depend, yeah, I, you can depend on me. If I can get it done, I'll get it done. That's what that sounds like to me. But rely sounds a lot more rock solid than than depend. So rely is more, I can count on you. I can rely on you. Yeah, if somebody, if, if I told somebody, can I rely on you? And they said yes, I would trust that. And that would, I would put that at the top of the, my list of things I could I could count on or, or depend on or whatever word you want to use. 
because reliability is, again, it's a semantic thing, but when I hear the word, and I think a lot of it is, is, is subconscious, when people say words, we don't always hear the same thing. We have, we have different versions of that word. When we hear it, we might not hear the same definition. But I think a lot of people would, would maybe agree that rely gets to trust, whereas dependability gets to hoping we get this done. Reliability is like, I will be there come hell or high water, the, 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 the seven seas, famine, pestilence, nothing could stop me from getting this, this done. As opposed to depend, it's a little softer in my view. Okay, so Brina says, I think reliability leads into de dependability. But you're saying, do you agree with that? Or you think that, that well, no, you're not agreeing with it because you, you, you think it's, it's the opposite. Crucible? I think reliability, if, if, if I had to pick, if, if I would to, to take something away from a conversation with somebody, I would feel more comfortable if they told me, not without, without me having to ask, you can rely on me. I would have a higher degree of trust in that person as opposed to if they had said, you can depend on me. Would the gap be very wide? Probably not. But I tend to put more weight in the reliability camp than in the dependability camp. Okay. Barbara? <laughs> I'm literally sitting here with the Merriam-Webster dictionary <laughs> up on my screen. <laughs> and... I've got the word rely on the screen and the definition of rely is to be dependent. <laughs> the system of which we rely for, oh, it says the system on which we rely for water uh, to have confidence based on experience. So, you know, I, I think, I think, you know, I'm not talking for Crucible Man because he certainly doesn't need that, but I, I think it, it's it's in the tone. It's in the way that people say the things that. Well, certainly I would would be in the same camp as Crucible Man. Um, I would uh, if someone says to me, "Look, you can rely on me." I I, I would trust them more than if they said, "Look, you can depend on me." It, it sounds a stronger word. You know, it's they're gonna they're gonna follow through on their promise. Um, but literally, the the definition of rely is to be dependent. So. For me, it's semantics, and yeah, I'm definitely I've struggled tonight. So um, I'll, I'll have to sit with the dictionary open anytime you do a show like this before uh, again. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I post my topics the Sunday that Sunday uh, night. So okay, uh, shy lady is having trouble getting back in. So because um, she's just frozen on on my screen, I'm pretty sure you guys don't see her at all. So mate, you you have the mic. Well, as I said in the comments, um, people would consider me as a dependable person. I wouldn't consider myself that because sometimes my mind and my vibe are two different, sometimes at war. But I'm very reliable to get it done in my own time. But dependable, I, uh, people would say. But for me, I like to have fun, laugh, and then get it done but not in a specific time frame mm, depends so okay all right and may uh, i'm going to come back to you because i am um, going to start wrapping things up and i'm going to start with you on do you have any last words anything you want to add or any words of wisdom you would like to impart um listen jordan jordan peterson yeah, that's a very cool person to listen. <laughs> Has some very interesting um, topics and interest. His book, his, and there's a thing, I don't remember what it's called. There's a, uh, I, don't, I don't even remember, but Jordan Peterson, I think a lot of you people know who he is. He's a very interesting person. Has a lot of interesting concepts and way to approach life. And, yeah. Okay. Crucible. 
most people don't think about these things because I don't think about them either. Most of us wouldn't think about them unless we were here on this panel and in this chat room, you know, discussing them. But it, it does give you pause when it will me a little bit going forward when I hear people use certain words and when I use certain words, I'll have to maybe think twice about, am I conveying the right sentiment? Am, am I being clear enough? Am I being specific enough? Or when I hear something coming back towards me, you know, you don't want to dissect and parse every word everybody says, turn it upside down, looking for hidden meanings and things. But it is helpful to kind of understand the use of semantics and what people say versus what you hear um, or what you say versus what somebody else hears. Um, it's an interesting philosophical conversation and one I would not have thought to think about without the without the topic today so always always good food for thought salad okay all right and uh baram <laughs> purposely coming to you last <laughs> do you have any words of wisdom that you would like to impart especially since you have words of wisdom in front of you in the dictionary so oh, no i certainly needed it tonight um i've really struggled with these shows and i'm glad that you do them because it, it helps with certainly with me learning this kind of stuff and um getting better at it um but no tomorrow uh will be a my show <laughs> it'll be completely different and uh, i hope everyone comes tomorrow and um gets their debating skills at the ready uh, for an interesting night yep Yes, uh, Bahram is uh, hosting the show tomorrow, uh, and uh, he is doing Flat Earth, which I am definitely going to be pushing back on. So, Ba, you want to uh, tell him about your uh, topic? Yeah, just um, Flat Earth is my favorite conspiracy theory. Um, I, it's, it was the one that got me into conspiracy theories, and uh, I, I feel that it's a good one to start off with because most people will have a you know, I say they'll have their own feelings about it. It's not one that you needed to, you know, dig deep into the rabbit hole to 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 find any, you know, opinions on. Um, so that that's mainly why I chose it. It's not I didn't want this show to turn, you know, conspiracy. I just thought it was a good uh, way to to show uh, the debate skills because that's what we like. Oh, I certainly like it, and that's why we started friendly differences. Um, but ultimately. Um, it should be a fun show as well. I don't want to know, like hatred because I know this topic can be quite polarizing. People can get quite mad about maybe some stupidity. Like I know it can come from both sides, flat earthers and people who believe in the globe can get very heated over this subject. So you know, it, it'll all be. I have very thick skin, so please don't don't hold back. It, just you know, just keep it respectful. That's all I ask. Okay. So uh, that is tomorrow. So Bahram, uh, he will be um, he will be uh, hosting, and I will just be the admin, or one of the admins, because Juju is is my uh, other admin. So, all right, guys. So again, thank you. You know, I know this show is completely different from the shows that we did um, Monday and Tuesday, but you know. Um, you know, when, when people, you know, say things to me and they use certain words, you know, I'm like, well, are you sure about that? And, and again, you know, growing up, I don't know if it's the fact that, you know, my mom, you know, taught school, but I would say things, my sister would say things and she would say, exactly what do you mean? Do you mean this or do you mean that? And I find myself saying that to my son, because sometimes my son has a hard time um, saying what he means. And I'm always saying, well, asking him, well, what do you mean? You know, is that, are you sure you want to use that word? And I've just come to see words differently. I come to, and I am, you know, sometimes I do, you know, zone in on, on words and, you know, whatever that I probably shouldn't, but and then having the conversation with, with, with my friend, uh, with her whole thing about counting on and, you know, depending upon her son to pick up the, 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 the little sister from school, that's where this, this came from. So, Anyway, you guys, my music is not working today for whatever reason, you know, uh, like piping has just been kind of up and down lately. So I won't have any going out music, but I thank everyone for coming. Frankie, Power Girl, um, Ray, Sharon, um, Juju, that 
um, that guy, Bob Baram, Maid Man, um, Brina, Crucible, uh, Frankie, uh, who am I missing? Shy Lady, uh, GP Man, Mama Bear. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. So on that note, go where the wind takes you. And I hope you guys come tomorrow to support Baram Do Flat Earth. Okay? So ha have a good day, everybody. Bye.